Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In today's video I want to talk about the clever engineering behind vintage Christmas lights. I have this set here which was paid in German marks which dates it before 2002 when Germany adopted the euro currency and it consists of 15 candle shaped light bulbs. One of the first things to note here is that these lights are actually low voltage. They are 14 volt 3 watt lights. However, the main voltage here in Europe is 230 volts. So how does that work? Well, maybe we'll have a clue if we power this up. So let's see what happens when we remove one of the lights. If you remove one of the lights, all of them go out. So that means that they run in series. So by running them in series, the wiring is a lot more convenient because you don't have junctions for every single light. But this also introduces the disadvantage that if one light goes out, the whole string goes out basically. So since the lights are all in series and they are all identical, the mains voltage distributes equally across every single light. So that means that they have to run at a lower voltage. So in our case, for a mains voltage of 230 volts and 15 lights, basically each light gets around 15.3 volts. So let's see what the schematic looks like for the entire string. So this is basically the schematic for the whole string. Remember how I said that if one light goes out then the whole string basically goes out? Well, let's test this theory. I will replace this light with a broken one. And as you can see, something unexpected happens. This light is indeed out because it's broken, however the other ones keep going. And this is where the clever engineering comes in. Since they all run in series, there could only be one explanation for this. And that is that this light is actually shorted. So let's test it with a multimeter. So let's connect the multimeter to this light bulb and measure its resistance. Ok, so it's not really a dead short, but the resistance is around 12 ohms. So there is something weird going on inside this light. So what do you think? Is it an accident that it kind of shorted out or is it something made on purpose? Well, it was definitely made on purpose to keep the other lights going. But how did they do it? Because we all know that when a light bulb goes out, it basically fails open circuit. To demonstrate this, I set up a small experiment. I have here my curve tracer and I want to connect one of these broken lights to it to see what happens when you increase the voltage. And I can do this because I was lucky enough to find one of these lights that failed open circuit. So that means that it failed, but the bypass mechanism didn't trigger for some reason. So let's just connect it to the curve tracer to see what happens. But before starting the experiment, I would like to say a few words about safety. As you can see, the curve tracer says danger high voltage right here and the message is there for a reason. That's because the curve tracer is a really dangerous piece of test equipment. As you can see, it can go up to 100 volts per division and it covers about 10 divisions, which means that it can easily produce about 1000 volts. So this means that you shouldn't try this experiment at home. So you've been warned and if you do so, you do it at your own risk. So we are at 50 volts per division and by slightly increasing the voltage, you can see that the characteristic looks like a horizontal line, which means that the light bulb is basically open circuit. And we are at 50 volts. Let's increase the voltage. 100 volts, still open circuit. 150 still open circuit, 200 volts and as you can see it's shorted out. Isn't that amazing? And now you will see that by decreasing the voltage the bulb will never get back to the initial state. So we are now at 0 volts and we can increase the voltage once again and as you can see the bulb is still shorted. So what happens is that the bulbs have a hidden varistor inside. During normal operation the varistor sees about 15 volts so it doesn't conduct. However when the filament opens the varistor sees the full mains voltage and it just shorts out and bypasses the broken filament. And that keeps the other lights on. Now in normal operation current coming from the mains flows through the first light, has nowhere else to go except for the second light 
the current exiting the second light can only go to the third one and so on which means that all the lights share the same current and when they all share the same current and they are all identical the main voltage spreads equally across every single light so every single light gets around 16.6 .6 volts in normal operation so let's see what happens during a fault let's say that this light goes out well if this light goes out then current cannot flow anymore so all of them go out and this also means that the voltage doesn't spread equally anymore so the faulty light will have the full mains voltage across its terminals and now that we've seen how one light bypasses itself let's redraw the schematic Now this schematic certainly solves the issue of having one light out because the broken light can simply be bypassed by the varistor. And the current will flow through the varistor instead of flowing through the lamp. However, this introduces some new problems. Since one light is bypassed, this means that every single remaining light will get a slightly higher voltage. And the slightly higher voltage makes the other lights more prone to failure. And also, in my opinion, there is another reason why this schematic is a really bad idea. And that is, what happens if all the lights go out? They will all be bypassed by the varistors until all the varistors are basically shorted and then you get a dead short across the mains, which is really something you want to avoid. That's why some of these lights actually say that you have to replace the broken bulbs immediately. But still, I think that having varistors in every single light is a really clever solution assuming you also have a fuse somewhere on the line. And now, just for fun, let's calculate the power for the whole string. And I'm doing this because on some Facebook groups I've seen some debates about this, because people assume that if one light draws 3 watts at a reduced voltage, then the whole string draws 3 watts at a full mains voltage, but that's not how things work, so let me prove that. First of all, let's calculate the voltage for one light. So the voltage across one light is VH1, let's call it that, equals simply 230 volts, which is the main voltage, divided by 15, which is the number of lights. So the voltage across one light is around 15.3 volts. And now let's calculate the current. To do this, we will ignore the varistors and assume that everything runs in series. So that leaves us with only one possible current to calculate. And here's where we run in a bit of trouble. And that's because the lights are in theory 14 volt. However, we run them at a slightly increased voltage of 15.3. So to simplify things, we can assume that one light is still a 3 watt light, even though we run it at an increased voltage, which is basically a wrong assumption. But let's say it's good enough for our math. So the current is equal to the power of one light, let's call it pH1, divided by the voltage across one light, which is VH1. And the current here is 3 watts divided by 15.3. So the current is around 195 milliamps. And finally, let's calculate the total power. The total power, the total power equals the total voltage times the current. So the total power is 230 volts multiplied by our current, which is 195 milliamps, which gives us a total power of 45 watts. So the total power is definitely not 3 watts. And that's because every single light draws 3 watts, so the total power is actually 15 times 3 watts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more content related to electronics, please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. That's it for now. Bye.